It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. When you know what or who I'm talking about, I want you to go and put that in the chat. Are you ready? Okay. This person has won more U.S. Open titles than anyone else in the history of tennis okay they've been ranked number one okay more than anybody else in the history of tennis they are known as the goat or the greatest in the course of tennis let me see if anybody put it in the chat yet let's see okay check this out this is going to give you the wisdom bam who is that what's that person's name uh-huh what is that person's name? Okay, that's what we're talking about here today. I got a short video I want you to listen to so you can understand the context of this. Okay, this is gonna give context to what we're gonna talk about here today. Now, let's look at Serena. There we go. She was first ranked number one in 2002, unseating her sister Venus in the process, and Serena stayed there for over a year as she won four consecutive major titles, AKA the Serena Slam. Injuries, inconsistency, and even her own sister kept her from regaining the top spot until 2008. She was back on top for part of 2009 and most of 2010 until a series of injuries, stepping on a glass at a restaurant, then emergency procedures for blood clots, kept her off the court for nearly a year. In 2013, she became the oldest woman to be ranked number one, a record she broke every week for the next three and a half years on the way to tying Graf's record for consecutive weeks at number one. Then she broke it again in 2017, twice. That was the year she won the Australian Open while pregnant by the bot. All told, her number one ranking spanned a period of 15 years, while her peers in the history books enjoyed about a decade at the top. A decade doesn't even cover the span of time of Serena's career grand slams. There are at least 13 years before her first and her last championship at every major. She won her first major at the 1999 US Open a few weeks before she turned 18. 20 years later, she was in the final at the US Open. Two decades of Grand Slam finals. No one in tennis, male or female, has ever been at or near the top for so long. The okay, <clears throat> so today, this is gonna give context, right? Serena is dominant, okay? She is dominant in so many ways, has dominated in so many decades, okay? And some people would say that she is so dominant that she has her own reign, okay? Or her own kingdom, okay? So many victories, so many titles, so many accomplishments, okay? That she has to be acknowledged and put up there with the greatest of the greats. The same thing is true about God on a whole nother level. He has dominated in so many areas. Matter of fact, he has never lost a match, okay? He is undefeated, okay? Victory belongs to him, and he's got his own kingdom. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Today's message is going to center around your kingdom come, your will be done. When we think of kingdom, we think of an area. Many of us think about the United Kingdom, which is an area, it's a country, right? But when the Bible uses the term kingdom, okay? He's talking about sovereign reign or sovereign rule, okay? Let me help you out already. If you're not taking notes, go and get your notepad right now, okay? Go open up your Evernote right now so you can see uh, and so you can be taking notes on this. When you see the word kingdom in this tone that God is speaking, he's talking about sovereign rule or sovereign reign, okay? All right? Uh, and one of the things that's going to help us to learn our message today, today's message is called make it rain, not make it rain, okay? But make it rain. This message is about bringing God's purpose from heaven to earth. It is about us bringing God's plan from heaven to earth. It is about bringing God's idea from heaven to earth. It is about bringing God's power from heaven to earth, okay?
It's about that. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus, what is Jesus doing here with this message? What is he doing here, right? This is the Lord's Prayer, or what is known as the Lord's Prayer, which is a model for how to pray. He's teaching us how we should be praying. First, he teaches us we should acknowledge our Father. Then he says, I want you to know that your job is to make my name holy in the earth. In other words, you should be a signature people, a stand people that stand by and see something else. And then he says, I want you to pray that my kingdom will come and my will will be done. Before you ask, for a blessing, before you ask to be healed, before you ask for your needs to be met, before you ask for God to heal your body, before you ask for God to do anything, he says, the first thing I want you to do is to ask for my kingdom to come. Because sometimes, watch me, you and I ask and we ask for the wrong thing. Oh man. Sometimes we ask for what we want, but it's not the best thing. So God says, before you ask for anything, ask for my kingdom come and my will to be done. Because sometimes we want a good thing for ourselves, but God wants a great thing for us. Do you hear me? Sometimes we want a good thing for ourselves, but God wants a great thing for us. Uh huh. So he says, before you ask for anything, ask for my kingdom to reign, not only in the earth, but in your life. Don't only ask for my kingdom to reign in the church, but ask for it to come in your life because God has some things that will not be released if we lay our prayer request before him like it's a hostage negotiation, okay? You don't lay your prayer request before God. God, I need you to do this, and I need you to do it, and I need you to do it, and if you don't do this, God says, before you ask for what you need, ask for me to have my way, because guess what? God's way is better than our way. God's plan is better than our plan. God's agenda is better than my agenda. Uh-huh, uh-huh. God's purpose is better than my plan. Come on, somebody put that in the chat. God's purpose is better than my plan. Come on, one more time, put it in the chat. God's purpose is better than my plan. And let me tell you why God's purpose, why you're putting it in the chat. God's purpose is better than my plan. Let me tell you why God's purpose is better than your plan and my plan. Because we do not have the capacity to see everything, but God can see it all. So when, God, when we give God, dare I say, permission, or when we give God authorization to do what he wants to do in our lives, we are saying, Lord, I know that my plan is not the best plan, but I know that your plan is better than my plan. And I'm willing to submit my plan to yours if it's the better plan. And let me tell you this, most of the time, God's plan is the better plan. <laughs> if not all the time, God's plan is a better plan because we're functioning with limited information. Let me give you a quote here. <clears throat> let me give you a quote here that you can write down. Prayer does not convince a reluctant God to act on our behalf, but it gives God permission to work in our lives as he already desires. One more time. This is by David K. Bernard. Prayer does not convince a reluctant God to act on our behalf, but it gives God permission to work in our lives as he already does. In other words, Prayer, when we begin to pray to God, it says, God, I'm not going to make you bring me along kicking and screaming. I'm going to go willingly where you want me to go. So when the relationship ends, I might cry, but I'm not going to try to go back and rekindle the relationship because if it ended, you wanted it to end. Uh-huh. If, 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 if it ended that way, you wanted it to end that way. If, if they left me, it's because, Lord, you wanted it to happen so you could bring the people that need to be there. If, if you, uh, if they turn their back on me, it's because you're getting ready to send people into my life that will not leave God. Uh, T.D. Jake says it this way. Those that could stay, I mean, those that couldn't, those that stayed could not leave. And watch me. Those that leave left could not stay. I'm preaching. Our church is over. T.D. Jake said, those that stayed could not leave. 
and those that left could have not stayed. In other words, the good is working and the bad is working. Those that are still here are working and those that are left are working. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Your destiny is not tied to anybody that has left you. Woo, hallelujah to God. Somebody came on here just to hear that. Your destiny is not tied to anybody who has left you. Your destiny is not tied to your ex. Your destiny is not tied to uh, uh, your, your ex-husband, your ex-wife. Your destiny is not tied to the job you used to have. The destiny is not tied to who you used to be connected to. The destiny that you have is tied to the people that are here and the people that, are, that God is bringing. So don't you cry over who left. You should be praising God because you know the best is yet to come. Jesus says, My kingdom come. My will be done on earth. Ooh, I feel that thing. I, let me say it again. Your destiny ain't tied to nobody that left. If they left, God bless them, but they weren't supposed to stay. He says, my kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. St. Matthew chapter number four, verse number 17. This is Jesus speaking here. Uh-huh. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was saying that when I step on the scene, the kingdom of God is here. Jesus's first message was that the kingdom is here. Jesus's first message was that there is a new administration that is coming to take over the world. There is a new a, a, a governmental body that is coming into the world. That's why when you become a son or a daughter of the almighty God, you are not called to take sides. You're called to take over. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, you are not called to, oh, I'm only going to be with the Democrats or I'm only going to be with the Republicans or I'm only going to be with people who believe this. Or, I'm only going to believe be with people who believe that. I'm only going to be with people who, who, who believe this in the morning or people who believe this in the night. He says, when you are called and you submit yourself under the kingship of Jesus Christ, you are not called to take sides. You're called to take over. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. What is he saying? The kingdom is here. He's saying it's time for you and I to do what we've been called to do. It's time for us to stop running from our purpose and to run toward our purpose. Uh-huh. Somebody put in the chat, I'm called to take over. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. Put it in the chat. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. On my job, put it in the chat. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. In my family, I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. In my community, I'm not taking sides, I'm taking over. In my relationships, I'm not taking sides, I'm taking over. Uh huh. When I walk into the place, things shift because I'm not called to be on this side or that side. I'm called to take over because God has provided me with dominion. Because when he says, my kingdom come, he's saying, my will is to have the things that are happening in heaven or the things that happen in earth to align with heaven. Uh-huh. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. Uh-huh. I'm not taking, oh, hallelujah. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. I'm not choosing this or that. I'm walking in all of it. Uh-huh. You can't limit me to what I used to do. Uh-huh. Because what I used to do is helping me for what I'm getting ready to be. Hallelujah. You can't limit me to what you used to know about me because what you used to know about me is helping me to be who God is calling me to be. Uh huh. So my breakdowns help me to get to my breakthrough. Uh huh. Me not having enough is helping me to walk in more than enough. Uh huh. My pain is helping me to walk in purpose. Uh huh. My hurt helped me to be a healer. Hallelujah. Uh huh. The hurt I went through is helping me to heal others. I'm not taking sides. I'm taking over. He says, the kingdom of God is not coming. It's here. Somebody in the chat. What is this? Put it in the chat. What is that? Put, put that in the chat. What is that that we're looking at? Uh-huh. 
What what is this that's on the screen right now? Somebody put it in the chat. Tell me what it is, okay? What is that? Uh huh. And then after you put what it is, answer me this: Who is in charge of that area? Okay. Don't be afraid to put what you think. Who is in charge of that area? Uh huh. Who is it? Right, Mark. That's planet Earth. That's the world. Who's in charge of the world? Are we in charge of the world? Is God in charge of the world? Is the devil in charge of the world? Who's in charge of the world? Uh huh. Put it in the chat. Who's in charge of the world? Uh huh. Because there's some misconceptions that many of us have and struggle with. Okay, the planet Earth, the world. Okay, uh, uh, this world, or the Bible refers to it as this age. The Bible says that the devil is the prince and the power of the air. Uh huh. And there, there is wickedness in this world, but this world does not belong to the devil. There is wickedness in this world, but this world does not belong to the enemy. Guess what? After Adam and Eve came into the world, God gave them dominion. In other words, <clears throat> he gave them the ability to rule in Genesis. He says, I am giving you dominion and I'm giving you the ability to rule. Uh huh. So God gave man the management of earth. I'm, 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 it's going to make sense in a moment. God gave man the responsibility to manage the earth. Uh huh. So we should recycle and we should take care of the earth and we should green, green space and all that jazz. That is important. God expects us to manage it. But even though we're managing it, it's not ours. And even though evil is in the world, the world does not belong to God. I mean, does not belong to the devil. Let me say it again. The world does not belong to the devil, even though the devil is working in systems and government and uh, drugs and addiction and challenging and crime and violence. He's doing all these things in the world. The world does not belong to him. He can do some things in the world, but the world does not belong to him. God gave us management of it. But guess who the owner is? Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to run up out of here. I wish the Bible says that I've called man to manage it. But a manager has authority, but does not have full authority. Hallelujah. A manager is the fir uh, foremost authority in the building. Uh huh. The manager is only in charge for the shift. But there is one that's greater than the manager, and that's the owner. And who is the owner of earth? Psalms chapter 24, verse number two. Write this down if you're taking notes. The earth is whose? The Lord's. The Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. So God is saying, I'm calling you to the world so you can walk in dominion in it. I'm calling you into your job so you can walk into. Don't tell them, oh, you need to come to church because God wants to do something in your life. When you see them in pick and say, say, listen, lift your hands. God wants to set you free. Right, Put the bananas down and the oranges down and lift your hands. Can I pray for you right now? I see the spirit of heaviness on you. I want to pray that God will break that thing off you. No, you can come to church Sunday and experience the community and get healed and delivered and then learn more about God. But God don't want to wait for you to come to Sunday to get healed and delivered. I have authority because I'm a son or a daughter of God to pray for that person in that moment and break the chain, break the curse, break the lie, break the cycle, break whatever it is. I don't have to wait till Sunday 10 a.m. to get set free. You can be on Ashley Field and I'm watching my son play football and I see you with the spirit of depression on the bleachers and I come and sit next to you and say, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I believe God wants to break something in your life. We are are called to rule and Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand in other words it's here so you don't have to walk around saying well I don't want to offend nobody and what 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 are they going to think of me if I pray for people in the store or what are they going to think of me if I'm praying for people in the neighborhood what are they going to think of me if I'm texting people and tell them I'm praying for you and texting people to tell them that God's going to make a way for you you don't have to be scared this is your father's world Hallelujah. This is your father's world. So when God says, pray for him, pray for him. When God says, tell them, I don't know what you're going through, but God told me to tell you it's getting ready to be better. Do what God says do because you are authorized to work here because this is your God's work. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. So God has given you the ability to reign here. Uh-huh. 
and a son. There's these things that princes have. Uh huh. There's this thing called an edict. E D I C T S. Okay. E D I C T S. An edict. Okay. My mind. <laughs> Help me, Lord. An edict is a thing that a prince has authority over. Uh huh. An edict is a thing that a prince or, or, or a princess sends out into the world. And that thing has power to impact nations. Uh huh. Did you hear me? It has power. The other thing I spelled has power to impact nations too, but that's a different kind of power. Hallelujah. Listen, the truth of the matter is, he says, you as a son or a daughter of God, you have the ability to send out a message because of who your father is and it impact the nations. Did you hear what I said? Your father has given you authority to send out an edict. And that edict is a declaration that it will get better. So when you speak and you say, I shall not always be here. When you speak and say, God is getting ready to turn it around. You've got power and authority to send these things out because you belong to God. Uh -huh. It says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and they that dwell in because he has founded it upon the sea. So he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done. I need you guys to go all the way downstairs. Now, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Uh-huh. He says, Lord, I need your kingdom to come because our world needs help. He says, there are too many hurting people in the world right now. I need your help. There's, there's so much pain around me. I need the kingdom to come down and to give me authorization. There's so much challenge in the world right now in that bag there's black markers and there's a um whiteboard in the back seat of your car can you grab it for me he says i need your kingdom to come and your will to be done he says i need it to happen he says i need it to happen i got another scripture here i want you to see john chapter three i'll take them right here john chapter three and verse number 16 and 17. It's talking about God's kingdom here. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. Take a picture of it and then you can wipe it clean. Should not perish, but have eternal life. Watch it. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved. So you and I are here. So salvation can come into the earth. So we are not here just to wait until it's our time to go to heaven. We are here because God says, I wanna do something in the earth and I am sending you to do it. I wanna deliver people in the earth and I am sending you to do it. I wanna make people whole in the earth and I want you to do it. I want to show this community what it what a godly woman can do when she raises kids by herself. Reign. Show what the reign of God. I want to show what a husband and a wife can do when they are united under me and you 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 make a contribution in the world through your son and your daughter. What if I told you that one of the most powerful contributions you can have, whether you never own a business, whether you never have a title in God's church, is to make boys and girls, or raise men and women that love God with their whole heart. What if I told you one of your greatest contributions in the world was to raise men or women that respect one another, respect people who have different beliefs, and love God with all their heart. They know how to pray. They know how to call on God. No, they might not. They might not end up uh, being an attorney. But if they do, they're going to be an attorney that loves God from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. Uh-huh. 
Yes, they might be a teacher, but they're going to be a teacher that not only teaches math, but they're teaching with God's authority. And when they see things on those students, they begin to pray and chains fall off. They're not only going to be a bus driver, they're going to be a bus driver that they get on with burdens, but they get off with blessings. Hallelujah. Not only, not only are they going to be an Uber driver, but you're going to get in the car with, with pain and you're going to get out the car healed because God is sending you and I in the earth to do something. And God says, when you are acting on my behalf, you are uh, uh, cooperating with my reign. When you are loving the people that I've called you to love, you're making it rain. You're showing dominion. Uh huh. When you see something arising in your children and in your house that you know is not the purpose, uh, those two chairs. When God is doing that, he says, I'm getting ready to show you what the rain is. I need the tall, one of the tall, uh, um, um, what do you call it? Chairs. Chairs, thank you. He says, I'm getting ready to show you. And I want, I want you to look here at this diagram because I'm getting ready to draw something because I want you to see. Many of us think that um, one is good. Many of us think that, let me stop sharing so you can see this. Many of us think that um, God's plan is for us to get from heaven, to go from earth to heaven. Perfect. Okay. So the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 1 that God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. Heavens and the earth. So this is, we think that this is the earth, right? Uh oh. We think that this is the earth. Uh huh. And we think that this is heaven. Uh huh. And we think that our purpose is, or God's purpose, was to come down here and to bring us where? From earth to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what many of us think. Okay? And we clapping and we praising and we rejoicing because we like, oh, I'm getting ready to go to heaven. Okay? But this is not, this is a half truth at best. The truth of the matter is that the way God created it, and we can turn to Genesis and see this. The truth of the matter is that the way God really created the earth, the system that he created, there's earth, I mean heaven, and then there's earth. Mm -hmm. And there's an overlap here. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In other words, they are working together. Uh huh. And God said, my goal, uh huh, is not to get you from here to here. But in Genesis chapter three, we see that God was moving. I mean, Genesis all throughout the Bible until chapter number three, we see that God was moving and interacting with Adam. They could come and go as they please. But in Genesis chapter three, man, okay, decided they wanted to rule. And they said, no, we don't want to do it your way. We want to do it our way. And then there began to be a separation, uh huh, between earth and heaven. So there was a separation because we declared our independence, uh huh, uh huh. And then Jesus comes, hallelujah. And he says, no, no, no. I am coming to bring my kingdom into the world. So the goal of you and I being down here is not to bring our earthly culture to heaven, but what is it? It is to bring heaven to earth. It is to bring righteousness to earth. It is to bring joy to earth. It is to bring peace to earth. It is to bring power to earth. It is to bring the anointing to earth because the Bible says in Revelation, thank you, we can put it down, that he says, behold, I saw a new heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, uh-huh. So our purpose and our design, so here, here's what we have to know. God put you where he put you so that you and I can walk in his power, uh-huh. God has you where he has you so you and I can walk in his power. This is the quote I wanna leave you with here. The kingdom of heaven, write it down, is not about leaving earth to go into the kingdom of heaven. It is about bringing the kingdom, I should have put of heaven down to earth. Let me say it again. God's purpose in the earth, 
Uh huh. How do I make it rain? How do I have dominion and operate in God's power? I bring God's dominion into my job. So when I'm in the job, I'm looking for people that God wants to minister to. Uh huh. When I go to pick up my child from school, I'm looking for people that God wants to minister to. When I drop off my kid at school, not only am I dropping them off and I'm saying, God bless my te the teacher, I'm praying that the teacher would see something in my child that will turn them to God. I'm praying that something that I say and do will allow God's reign to be present in the earth. I gotta go because my time is moving. But the purpose of God is that we, you and I, might bring heaven to earth. Why is earth so depressed? Because that's the system of this earth. But we've got to fight the earth's depression with heaven's joy. Uh -huh. Why is the earth so chaotic? Because we've got to fight earth's chaos with heaven's peace. Uh huh. Why is the earth fighting? Because God is sending peacemakers. Notice, he doesn't say, blessed are the peacekeepers. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. He says, I'm sending you to earth to make peace. I'm sending you to earth to make joy. Uh huh. So when we say, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, we're saying, Lord, use me to bring heaven into this earth. Use me to bring healing into a broken situation. Use me. We say, man, this earth is jacked up. Well, what are you doing about it? My community is jacked up. Well, what are you doing about it? My family is jacked up. What are you doing about it? Because God has called you and is calling you to make it rain. Make his rain happen in the earth. Uh, make his rule happen. That's why we pray for God's will to be done. So here's what I want you to do this week. I got two resources here I want to say before I end this, because I always want to give you resources, because some of us want to go further and deeper in our relationship with God. So two resources, write this down, write this down. The free resource is one of my favorite speakers. His name is uh, Francis Chan, Chan, Francis Chan, C-H-A-N, and he's got a video on YouTube called The Lord's Prayer. Francis Chan, the Lord's Prayer. Francis Chan, The Lord's Prayer. Put that on YouTube. He's got a great message that will supplement this message and give you more meaning and understanding behind it. And if you're looking for a book, I got a book resource for you. It's called Prayer, Experiencing All and Intimacy with God with Tim Keller. One more time. Prayer, Experiencing All and Intimacy with God, and that's from Tim Keller. Those are two free resources <clears throat> that are available to you. Jesus says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But let me tell you, that's not the last time he says that. The Bible says that Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. And on Gethsemane, in Gethsemane, God tells him, you, you got to die for the sins of the world. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 39, and he goes a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed. He said, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. We have access to heaven, not because we prayed, not because we've been baptized, not because we believed, but because Jesus made a way for us. Uh-huh. He said, not my will, but your will be done in the earth. So that's why when I pray, I can say, Lord, not my will, for your will be done in my family, in my life, in my physical health, in my mental health, in my marriage, in my relationships, in my community, in my, in, in my operations, in my communications, thy will be done. And that's not a passive prayer because God says, I'm using you to do my will in the earth. I'm done. I pray that this week, you would say, who can I pray for? Not only when I get home, but who, when, when I see somebody hurting, can I say, hey, listen, I see that you've got a lot on your mind. How can I pray for you right now? How can I pray for you? And they're going to tell you. And then say, listen, okay, you want peace? Can I pray for you real fast? This week, this week, 
Uh huh. You see somebody struggling. Hey, I see you're struggling. How can I pray for you? And they're going to tell you. And then here's what I want you to do. Say, okay, can I pray for you right now? Is that okay? In the store, while you're walking down the street, while you're in the community, I'm going to pray for you right now. You're bringing, hallelujah, heaven down. You're bringing, you're pulling heaven down. And darkness can't stay when light comes into the room. And hurting can't stay when healing is present. And pain can't stay when purpose steps in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who watched today. I pray for everyone who joined us today online. <clears throat> God, I pray that <clears throat> they would make it R E I G N rain in their household. How can they walk in dominion in their household? How can they walk in dominion in their family? How can they walk in dominion in their life more and greater beyond what has been? Do it for your glory. Make us walk in your reign at our job, on our way to our job, in the grocery store. Let us be looking. And in our prayers this week, before we ask for you to heal, before, you ask, before we ask for you to make a way, let us ask that you would make it rain in our life and let us walk in your power and in your authority and in your dominion. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you guys so much.